Oh, okay. <clears throat> Zeus, what's your favorite IEM regardless of price? Well, let me think. The U12Ts are great. Then you get the um, like the Andromedas, Andromeda Gold. And then you like those new S8s. I really like those Moondrop S8s. And then, oh, no, 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 fucking Nana. Is it the Nana? Is it the Nana? The Nana, na 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 You know that song. You, you all fucking know that song. Well, these got to me a while ago, and I just sort of ignored them because... Well, I ignored lots of things. And I had to start doing IM reviews. I'm way behind on reviews in general. I'm just like, I'm going to pick out a set of review. I'm just going to pick out any set, any old set, any set that I think, this set, look at this nice wire. Look, it's just a two wire that goes up into a single. I'll just review this one just because it's there. And when I get these things, companies just say, hey, can we send you this and this and this? I don't really research into what they're sending me. I just say yes. That's how you keep a nice stock of IMs in your table so that you can always pull from it and it's never boring. <clears throat> and it turns out these are the flagship from Kanira. Kanira. Where the hell does it say? Kanira. Somewhere. It's always script. There you go. The flagship. And I'm like, I don't study IEMs. They're not my like main hobby. I like amps, DAX, headphones for sure. Speakers, I got you covered. So when I hear flagship from a company like Canera, I'm like, all right, it's, pr it's probably like four or five hundred dollars. Well, these are nine hundred dollars, and I was like, uh, they're nine hundred dollars on AliExpress. Nine hundred dollars, and I'm so glad I fell in love with them before I knew the price. Because I always worry that knowing something like that is going to skew your judgment. Like, hey, have you seen this $80,000 watch? Wait till you see this $80,000 watch. We're going to show you this $80,000. This watch is $80,000. And then you see the watch. And even if it was a plain fucking Timex with the name scratched out, you'd be like, oh my god. I can see it. Because people are fucked up that way. That's how our brains are wired. So I picked up the non-nons. I assumed their price being lower end. Fell in love with the way they sound. Because it's not the build. The wire's nice. We'll get to this, but... um, Yeah. Yeah, I had to decide that it's like... This is a platinum episode? Am I, am I gonna... I'm gonna, for the first time, I'm gonna skew that $1,000 line down just a little bit. Because IEMs at a, at 900 is, feels fucking platinum to me, buddy. So I'm wearing them. I'm not going to take them out for a bit. We're gonna we're gonna pop open some some stuff. We're gonna look at it. Then I'm gonna tell you why the non nas are my favorite IEM. Favorite sounding IEM. And it ain't like I'm gonna sell a bunch. Linsoul has them. Uh, their Audio 46 is gonna have them, and obviously AliExpress has them. So you're gonna be able. You're, you're full of places you're going to soon be able to buy them oh the edge series type e earpiece yeah they come with final audio tips which i find that interesting that a company that isn't final audio is just it's not like it's comply where comply makes tips and therefore you know you contact them as a hey send us some tips and then they put in your thing and it's fine no final audio who also makes <clears throat> ims has made the tip collection for them and I'm not using them because I have a very consistent method for IEMs. Take them out of the pile, put Tacony tips in, and use them. And that's it. If I find something flawed with their sound and I really can't grasp them, I might dig into the stock tips. And people are like spin rights and spin fits and sit face and all those other tips. Um, so look at this beautiful tip collection. They actually do feel, if I pull out one of like the foams... You could tell these are not like your standard thing. They want a the little bit of the extra mile to bring those to you. Uh, all the, the box is obviously what is it, hexagon. Hex is six. We got hexagon hexagonal paper. Just imagine we lived in a world where this is what everything was on. You got a parking ticket. It's in a hexagon. Please turn over for more. Make it clear. Make it real. Community 
join us. I think they want you to join their community. I don't know if you want to scan the you want to scan the screen and go there. I don't, I'm not doing that. Um, here's your little book about the Nana, the Nana user manual, and, um, and how the tips fit and uh, every. Oh yeah. So do you want to know what's inside of these? Uh, should I show them to you? No, no, no. We're not ready to show them to you yet. But um, I'm just going to keep going and we'll talk. So when I talk about IMs, usually you have to know how they're built. Is it a single dynamic driver? Is it uh, two balanced armatures and then a dynamic? Is it electro electrostatic and a dynamic? Is it all just balanced armatures? The S8 was just eight balanced armatures. All doing different frequencies or doubling up on frequencies. There's um, just more tips, just fucking more tips, more tips. And this pretty standard, actually, that's got a, I think I did that. That's my bad. So I took the three and a half millimeter off and then put it down. Standard looking case. It doesn't look $900 case, but I mean, you know what? That's fine, because I like this case. So you got a standard case, you get this. There's not much else hidden in here. This is, this is basically it. It is silver, though. What we're looking at here... And one second, one second, one second, one second. I just want to get another hit, baby. Yeah, no, okay, stop. Um, what we're looking at here is some very plain looking IMs. They're just acrylic, you know, clear. There's like a swirling pattern of red and blue. It's kind of pretty, a little dark. You know, I'm under like a 150 watt equivalent spotlight. So you could really pull out the details in that. But if you're just like wearing them under a hat, that's just an IEM. And it says Canera Nana in very, very, very fucking scriptive font. So it just looks like, like a three-year-old one. And that's what it is. But I mean, but I guess if you had to like study it, you could kind of make, you could definitely make a Canera. No, you can't. Never mind. I'm lying. You can't make out what it says. And you could sort of see through it. It's nothing... It doesn't look like anything special. It's just a hunk. It's just a hunk of plastic. And it's a lightweight hunk of plastic. Like, weighs nothing. That's where these different... That's why I grabbed them. I grabbed them because it's like, oh, you know what? This has like a cool looking wire. Look, it's got an aluminum tie piece. It's got these full copper ends. And yeah, these look a little crappy. They look a little two pin with like a lightweight aluminum thing. And the actual IM doesn't look very special. It's, what is it, three holes? It's a standard three hole. And I wasn't paying attention. There's actually an air duct there. I wasn't paying attention to everything else about this IM. And what I should have been paying attention is a little tiny script on the front that says, oh, this is a two electrostatic, two balanced armature, single seven millimeter dynamic. What? Electrostatic plus dynamic plus balanced armature. I believe that's, I believe I described it properly. Does it not say it all here? Sonyan, uh, yeah, they've, uh, 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 what? Yeah, here it is. Two Sonyan, which is different from um, the company that makes most of the BAs. It's two of those. One full frequency balanced armature, one and one custom. So it only has, it has two electrostatics, one BA and one custom seven millimeter dynamic driver. And it's $900. And it fucking sounds like $900, whatever that means. Cause Zeos will just say shit like that all the time. You don't, he doesn't even know what he's talking about. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I do know how to describe these though. It, it took me a bit. Because I've been talking to people in my patronage chat and they've had experiences and either people love them or they don't love them or they say they're lacking in detail. And these are not detail kings. I don't like look at an IEM and say, well, this hasn't been, this doesn't have this. So therefore it's not worth even looking at. <clears throat> the. <sighs> wow, I lost my, lost my whole fucking mind. Hold on a second. The Andromeda, thank you, okay. My brain kicked back on. It went into a deep sleep mode. The Andromeda will beat these in detail, absolutely, hands down, every day, all the time. If you just want the most fine little things to be presented to you, the Andromedas, we beat these. But here's what these do 
and I noticed it, and I started testing on the BTR5, and I moved from the BTR5 to all my other equipment, then went back to the BTR5, and I moved to this, this is the, um, the Heavy R5, which is the more powerful one, because, number one, when you put uh, a dynamic and a BA and two electrostatic drivers in it, it tends to be harder to drive than most, and secondly, uh, I needed to be able to move through the whole day listening to these. The whole day. What these IEMs can do is make every single song on your playlist sound like it's from a David Chesky album. And if you don't know who David Chesky is, he makes some serious audiophile bullshit. Not bullshit, like great music. Like, he just has some of the best recordings ever. And he was, it was great because you get the older ones and you could tell he's a young, hip guy that's just like, hey, we got this microphone. We're going to try to do some stuff with it and see if it's... So he's got passion for recording quality. And I'm not joking you. I sat both on my couch and my toilet and in my kitchen and outside with this player just shuffling. And I don't have it filled with just audiophile tracks. I have it filled with every track, every track from everything I ever listened to. And shit was coming on Songs that I know, and when they start, I forget what they are, because it sounds so different from my brain telling me, like, like when I'm listening to headphones, so I'm reviewing something, I will skip a lot. I will put on a song, and I'll be like, this isn't a good song to test with. Mm, this isn't a good song to test with. All right, this one's got good. And I will listen. I will fall in love with it or not. I'll figure out, I'll pick it apart, and go, eh, yeah, no. And, yeah. Not a single track played that I wanted to skip, and every single one of them sounded like it was a remaster, like a David Chesky remaster. And I don't know what the fuck that means, but I remember I remember specifically one track, I was sitting there, and I was having U12T like flashbacks. When I describe the U12Ts, those are the $2,000 IMs. And these are 900. So it's not far off. And keep in mind, this is like mega advanced Chinese shit. So it's probably equivalent to the $2,000 range of American made high precision stuff. But I was getting that sense of with the U12Ts, I said it's like there's 12 little pipes spread out. And the more quality your song is, the more pipes it uses to display the sound. And when it's really good, you can get all the way out there and you have different points of audio appearing. And that's what these are doing. More than any other thing I've noticed in them, when I'm really trying to focus, because you know, if I'm just here to enjoy it, I'm just here to enjoy it. But I need to sit in front of this fucking camera or behind this camera. I'm like the cameraman and the star, it's amazing. I need to be able to sit here and tell you what the hell's going on. And I didn't know what was going on for a while. And then I'm like, wait a second that sound and it was like like um what the hell is it when they do the washboard like the i i saw it i saw the clearing i saw exactly where that sound was happening and then i saw all the other sounds around it i saw every little bit like okay that's where that sound is happening in space these aren't the most detailed headphones but I'm not missing the detail. As far as like overall, like, hey, but Zio, so are they a bassy headphone or are they really treble? No, no. They can respond to low end in a way that is absolutely pleasurable, but not overdone. I don't think you're gonna find many like base Canon $900 IMs. People, they've, they've toned that down. You don't wanna have too much and blow it out and screw everything up. But that seven millimeter dynamic does its job. And then having placement of three different things, two electrostatics and a BA, you can pinpoint exactly in space where everything is. And this is just the right side of my head. This whole thing is happening again on my left side with different instruments and sounds and movements. It's it's surreal. If these don't measure well, I don't care. If other people think they lack detail, I don't care. 
you, you could you could give me a, a laundry list of reasons to not like these for technical reasons for like well this is really not what I don't care my job as this reviewer I will explain it to all of you and you can emulate it you can copy it you can fucking write it down in your Christmas is to put on an I am and see if I enjoy it that's that's number one that's that's it that's my only job is to take a fucking thing off that table, put it in my head, and wander around for two, three days and say, you know, eh, and then deliver that review. I go, eh, and I deliver a 30-minute review on eh. And if I go, oof, I deliver a 27-minute review on oof. And if I go, holy fuck, I deliver this 32-minute review of holy fuck. I'm probably underestimating. I know me. Put some stuff back where it belongs. These put you in a space like no other I am I've ever listened to. The U12Ts did that thing with the 12 things, but it sounded like it was directly in a row, and you could just turn on those vowels. This does that in a circle completely around your head, and there's like depth and up and down, and in songs I've never even contemplated listening to as like, oh, this would be a good audiophile reference song. All of a sudden it is. The... They look plain as fuck. You could leave these in the dashboard of your car and I don't think anyone's gonna steal them. Anyone that knows like IMs, if I know IMs. I picked them out of the table because I was like, eh, these look aight. And then I'm like, oh, flagship, okay, that puts a little bit onto the table, but it was fucking $900. Hold on. I'm gonna shove them back in my ears because passion literally fills my brain once I'm wearing something. And uh, this particular set only comes with the three and a half millimeter end. I would change it out because it's a two pin and I have two pin balance cables, but why? If you went over my heart with a three and a half millimeter, it also meant I got to try it on the Rebel Amp. I got to plug it into my Dark Voice. I plugged this thing into everything. It was a slut today. These IMs been in it. Also, it's $900 for this, $910 for the 4.4, and for some reason, $920 for the 2.5. Don't know why the 2.5 is the most expensive of the group, but it is. Put this back on. Let's see what's gonna blow my mind today. Hold on. Billy Joel, Angry Young Man, Prelude from Last Play at Shea. We've got a crowd. He's now playing the piano right inside my soul. And I just hear the crowd everywhere. Just they're everywhere. What was that? Someone just clap. I hear someone individually clapping. Is that an audience member or is that him on stage doing something? Whistle. These are like holographic layers. All right, next track. Guns and Roses, Paradise Lunch. It's... Hold on. Like, I already know that the Under Siege soundtrack, starring Se uh, Steven Seagal, by the way, um, I know that that soundtrack is really good. I like listening to it. But when I put that one track into, like, the sound demos, it was sort of like a thing that I did just for me, because, yeah, I just wanted to put me that. But, but Reveal Sub by Gary Chang, who did the Under Siege soundtrack, has never heard his own music like I'm hearing his music currently. Because I can unpause this. And there's like a... There's like a... Right here. Like right here. There is not, it's not stereo. This is not a stereo set of IMs. I refuse to believe it. This is just two channels, are you sure? 
if I had to make arguments, I would say it sounds like if you've got, what, two, three, four drivers in each ear, I would say each one of those is getting a separate signal that has been DSP corrected in place in different locations to deliver this sound in a way that no one's ever heard it before, where they put some sounds close and some sounds far away, then you're in this giant space to just process it. It's fuck. This is, is fuck. This is, is the fuck. Yeah, I've never, I've never, like, considered this soundtrack to be audiophile. Now it is. Next track. Told you this was slow. Lord. Yeah, things like piano, there's like a lonely piano, just boom. I'm I I know this is like dead air cuz I'm I'm a reviewer and you can't hear what I'm hearing and you're not going to like there's no sound demo that these could ever fucking accomplish because there's no headphone that does this that's the thing nothing up there that has ever been there or I've ever had on this desk can deliver Actually you know what that's not true because didn't I have those Genelex on this desk at one point? Or did I only do those in there? This sounds like DSP corrected Genelex. But more fun. Like when you're perfectly centered and you've got your scrunched down. And you had that giant waveguide. And every sound was hitting you with precise timing. And your room was corrected so that you got this bigger sound. But you had to sort of be locked in this little like hunchback position where everything was great. That's these. What an I am. And more fun. The Genelux were a bit too sterile. Um, uh, um, next. John Wick, Santino. Let's just fast forward a bit. Nope, not going to. We've got like that sound of like ringing a glass. Like wah, 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 wah. Yeah, I hear every, it doesn't sound like a song is playing. It sounds like many, many sounds, from different locations and positions. It sounds like I'm listening to someone's Appleton thing, Ableton thing, where it's just multiple. And they're all playing in that position, not just in a, low, in a row, just everywhere. That one's here and this one's here. These are my new favorite IMs. I'm sure I'm gonna find something else good in that desk behind me, but I don't I don't think for what I like for my taste, what makes Zeos happy, this is it. If the U12 T's were just a tiny bit more fun. Like I still think the FH sevens are one of the are the best thing Fio makes. But they're sterile and neutral and nice. They compete with the Andromedas, which are going for that like detail queen thing. And I think that they're they're close. They're not quite Andromeda levels, but they're they're up there. And this is a whole other fucking sport of audio. This is not like, well, is this an upgrade from? No. This is a completely different sound. You have got to want the things I'm describing right now. You have to want to be befuddled by how sounds are now coming from specific locations around your head and in it. And like, are the tracks different? Is this player doing some weird DSP that's hooked up to some other amplifiers in my ear? It doesn't make any sense. It never, I tried to play them loud to see if I would get like annoyed by treble or something. Nothing. I, I put on some really bassy tracks to see if it would like, distort a rattle and the bass hits and you know it but it never sounds bad i i may have found my iams these might be mine they might not be yours you might put them in and go you know it's 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 too much wacky stuff it's like a blonde blo3 if you have the blondes the blondes do wacky stuff 
and they sound really good. Now take the blondes and multiply their cost by 27 times and have every iteration of that cost actually matter up to $900. And these are those IAMs. That's it. I'm, I'm done. Um, I'm not selling them in the yard sale. I'll sell other things. I'll find other IEMs that need to be fucking sold, but not these. No, I'm going to try and balance. I might see if uh, Linsol or whoever will send me the balance cable. I would have liked to have tried and balance, but you know what? Fuck it. I don't need to be convinced anymore that I love these at all. And if you get a chance to listen to them, don't pay attention too much. Just put them in and just start listening. Just, just whatever, and see how it skews your music. Because if it's music you don't know, it's not going to work. you got to put these on your music that you know, because you'll have never heard it before. And it, does it sound better? Mm, I think it sounds way different and more interesting. I'm done. I'm done. Wallpaper. Wallpaper description. Download. Crop. Put on phone. Patreon, subscribe star, keep channel going. Now, I didn't buy these with any of that money, but trust me, lots of other things have been purchased at like rent and electricity and those fucking stupid speakers. Thank you for supporting me. Um, I want to point out that uh, YouTube has demonetized like, I'm going to say 60 videos in the last 30 days of just everywhere on all my channels. So I'm sure that the reckoning is coming where I will not get any money from them. So I, again, want to thank personally every patron and person on Subscribestar for supporting this channel. The $5 tiers you guys are in, obviously you could ask me any questions you want on platform and I get back to you probably twice a week. Uh, you also get to participate in the yard sales where if you want something that I'm selling, and I'm going to point at something that might be in the yard sale. This Motu, maybe. Uh, no, no. Uh, oh, yeah, the F, the three will probably be in there. Those are a gift. Those headphones will go. Um, those will probably, yeah, there's things. And all, all the old players are probably going to end up in the yard sale. If you want to bid on any of those, on the 1st to the 10th of every month, blind silent auction that started zero. So you join for $5, you say, I'll give you 80 bucks for that. And if it's worth 200 and you win for 80, actually you have to say 80, 52, some weird odd number. So there's no matching. No, I don't want, I don't want to have a bidding war once it's a guess. And then I ship for free in the United States and half shipping international. So I will ship to any country with anything you win, which is why a lot of countries have high bidders because they want that stuff that isn't available there. And you also get, well, that's it right? Yard sale. See these reviews early. That's another thing. Like you patrons, they know what they're looking at. They know that if Zio says these are the ones, they're buying them. There's not many in stock. They're buying them. And then come a week and a half later when these hit public and it's all you people seeing it. If there's, if you're one of the people who's like somehow interested into a $900 and getting a $900 IM, it may not be there. Because my patrons and my scrub star people got it first. So that's just the thing. The $10 tier puts you into the private Telegram chat where I have obvious arguments with people over what qualifies as a good I am. That's fine. I don't mind arguing. We've got quite a lot of people in there. We're about to come up on a reset at the beginning of April. So the whole room will be emptied and only current patrons will go back in because the number gets higher and higher. People leave Patreon, but you're not kicked out of the chat when the chat gets refreshed. You're still in Patreon, you join back in. Um, it's a private one-on-one, -on -one, actually it's a private 200-on-one -on questionnaire. Everyone can answer your questions, you can answer your own questions. You post things you like, you post things you hate. We talk about Project Melody if you want. All It's all I want. It's all I want is a whole dedicated chat of that, please. Um, behind the scenes access, you want to know anything about something? Hey Zeus, don't you have this headphone on that amp? Yeah, I have that headphone, but I'm wondering if I should get that amp. Could you put that headphone to that amp and play this song? Fine. That's what you're paying me to do. You're paying me to be, you know, there for you and answer your questions. Um, they also have access to, like, everything I know. Like, I've been talking about these for days with them. So they don't even have to wait for this review. They know how much I fucking love them. And above the $10 tier, there are tiers that will be future use real soon where I take items that maybe I don't want to sell. This I am or this DAC or this I am but I have boxes that will travel to a 
high-end patrons so they can use things for a week to try them out, because there's no other way to get some of this stuff. But Zeus has literally piles of things just not doing anything. Maybe a couple off my wall if I want to be real dickish. Pop some things into a box, insure it, ship it to Idaho, ship it to Alaska. A guy in Alaska can use it for a week, clean it, make sure there's no goddamn coronavirus on it, send it to the next guy. Everyone licks everything they get. It's going to be great. But that's coming up, and I'm not sure what the numbers are going to be on who and how many. That's going to be a very limited amount of slots for that sort of thing. Now, I know I said the time was going to be 32 minutes, but this has all been closure. So we're around the 35 to 40 minute mark, I think. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. You feeling it? She's feeling it. So, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna stop talking to you now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point out Hi-Fi Guides. And actually, I have to add this. Because if we go to Hi-Fi Guides, this is a site, by the way, HiFiGuides.com. If you go to like in ears and uh, there we go. There's all the in ears we currently recommend. I'm going to add these to them, and then if you slide the price slider, like I want to spend at least eight hundred dollars, but no more than sixteen hundred dollars. Currently, Andromeda is the only thing in there. So it'll be Andromeda and this, and then you could change, you could choose I want warm or V-shaped. Obviously that's not gonna work for that category. But yeah, look at the dark, bright, warm. Now DMS and I have both gone through these and added what we decide on, so sometimes we don't agree, but if he likes it or I like it, it's in this list. And then if you're really still confused about what you wanna do, you click the forums button and boom, we've got a mighty forum. The Hi-Fi Guides forum is, is mighty and busy, and full of interesting topics, and I always seem to go into one. Let's look at gaming audio. It's a new category. Competitive gaming portable closed-back headphones for around $100. That is a book. Cooler Master MH751, good. Tax Stars and Cooler Masters, Pro 82s. These are all, these are all students of the Z. KSC 75s, do it. Do it. Game in KSC 75s and be a boss. Anyway, so that's the Hi-Fi Guide forum. There's Hi-Fi Guides. There's Patreon. There's Subscribestar. There's a wallpaper in the description. What else you want from me? Please. Is it blood? I'll give you blood. Give me something sharp. I'm going to give you some blood. Hold on. I got some 